Hello friends, welcome back. Today we were going we we're going to implement the serialization of a passport user. Right now we're not loading an actual user object since we haven't set up our database. This can be done many different ways, but for our project we will connect to a database once when we start the server and keep a persistent connection for the full life cycle of the app. To do this, add your database connection string, for example, Okay, so we're going to get the MongoDB set up to the environment variable of MongoURI. This is used in the connection.js file. So let's look over here, connection.js. It looks like here they've got require.env, so they're requiring the use of the environmental file. Uh, we've got Mongo client where we require Mongo. Um, we have an asynchronous function called main. Uh, the const of URI is equal to where we get it from the um, dot, the env environmental file. We set a variable of client equal to uh, the Mongo client. And we pass in the capacity to connect to it. So this is basically connecting to it. So try await client.connect. So this says try to connect to the MongoDB. Um, make the appropriate database call. So the callback of client. Um, not sure where that's coming from. Catch any errors. Error throw, uh, if there are errors, log them. And if not, we want to throw a new error, unable to connect to database. Um, cool. So to do this, we want to add our connection string. Okay. You can set up a free MongoDB atlas. Now we've already set this up. Um, we want to connect our database, then set start listening for requests. The purpose of this is to not allow requests before our database is connected, or if there is a database error to accomplish this, you will want to encompass your serialization and your app routes in the following code. So yeah, be sure to uncomment my database code in deserialize user and edit your done null to include the doc. Submit your page when you think you've got it right. If you're running into errors, you can check our, our project here. All right, well, um, in past episodes, we've set up um, MongoDB. Uh, we've got it uh, under Atlas and the clusters. Um, so if you haven't set this up, what would I say? The best video to go to would be to go to a past one. Let's see, API microservices certifications. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we set up MongoDB for the URL shortener microservice, and we've set it up here. So if you're really unfamiliar with that, I would recommend going back to my videos on those. Um, or um, I'm just gonna show you how, how we do it um, immediately, so. So first we just log in to MongoDB. This is account.mongodb.com. Now I've already got this set up. I've already created a cluster. I'm just gonna reuse um, my old one. Uh, this is just the free one too. So I think that makes sense. Uh, we're going to click connect your uh, there. I'm going to copy this URI, but you know what? This is probably going to be the same one as in here. Okay, so what we want to do is set that into our environmental variable. So in our environmental variable, which is in this .env file, we got here from um, renaming the sample environmental variable and changing it to just .env. And so now we want to set up a Mongo URI. And we're going to set this equal to the, um, this long string from the Mongo database. Now, is this the same? I'm curious as to whether or not this is the same as this one. So I'm just adding this in here so we can see it. Gives us this cluster rewrite major. Persistent. To add this, add your database connection string. Okay, so they just say for example, so this is not right. And so what we want to do here is you'll see, so I pulled the um, 
the URI from uh, the compass, the MongoDB, and then here I'm going to enter a password and the database name. Now the database name is the same as the one here on your cluster, so you can change that one. And then you want to add your password for the database when you set up this in here. And you want to delete these and just add it in here. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now that my password's been added to my environmental variable, and we know we, it's important to remember that now that we've added to our environmental variable, we're going to want to do that in Heroku later. But for now, we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's just get back into this. So we've got Mongo URI. This is used in the connection.js file. Okay, so in the connection.js file, I'm just going back over this. I know it's... Sorry, I think that this is difficult, so I think it's important to take the time. So here they set the URI equal to process.env, and then it's Mongo URI. And so they're pulling that from this .env file. Um, so now we want to connect to your database and start listening. The purpose of this is to not allow requests. Da -da -da -da. Okay, cool. So I'm guessing that we can just throw this into app listen to out here. Okay, so this is going to be in the server JS file. So we're going to copy that and come to our server.js. So my DB is in here. We've got DB, client.db, collections users, route, render, pug, change the response. Be sure to change the title, route, index. This is our index route. And um, be sure to add this, route, app.route.get, unable to log in. Serialization and deserialization here. Okay, well, let's start by getting this guy. Um, serialization and deserialization, those are here. So let's paste this in here. And then they say they want the deserialization, the serialization and deserialization here. And be sure to add this. And so we're going to add this after the serialization and deserialization. And uh, app dot route. What is this app dot set view engine pug render pug? So we're rendering pug in here. So we want to change it, and we want to put the view engine. I'm pretty sure we want to put the view engine above this. Um, I think that we can put the view engine up here. Okay, cool. So now let's just make sure that this is all the way it should be. Cool. So this function ends here. I'm looking at these little blue lines to see where I am. And then dot catch. And then our error, unable to log in. So it's going to, if we get it. Okay, so let's just walk through this. So basically we're saying my DB, which is se uh, selected up here. And then async, we're connecting to the, we're, uh, asynchronously setting a variable client and we're passing in. So my database align, await client. So we're, I guess we're calling a function on here and then we can, the client has a, client is a variable which has the DB database collect users. So it's going into a collection called users and we're routing that to the index. We request, we render pug, connected to database, please log in, or passport.serialize. So if route, so if we go to index, um, we render connected to database. Okay. If this happens, that means we've connected to the database. And if not, we go to the root index, and then we have pug render the errors with the title and that. So this actually is going to be visible on the index page. So let's save our work here. And then I'm going to go over to the terminal and I'm going to go uh, nodemon um, server.js. So that way we start it in this cool thing that if we make any changes, it immediately reflects. So um, I'm going to go back to our local driver, which is here, and I'm going to refresh the page. And my guess is, OK, so it's hard to know whether or not. Um, let's see. I'm just going to console log here. Um, connected to database. Or we can also render it up here and say failed to connect.
to database. So if I save this, you'll see Nodemon immediately clicks over and starts refreshing. So it says connected to database. So that tells me that we've got it right. So if I refresh this page, it says connected to database. So my guess is we've got this. Now I'm going to get rid of these console logs because we don't want to leave console logs in there. And uh, cool. So save this. It's going to refresh. We can stop our server. Um, and now one thing that we want to do is get our URL from our environmental variable. And we're going to add that to uh, Heroku as well. But for now, let's start off by going git um, add. or Well, we can go git status. And that's going to show us that our server has been adjusted. So we want to say git add, say git commit. And we're going to set up uh, database um, functionality lifecycle functionality. Git push Heroku. So now we've pushed this code here up to our production server. So now this should show. And so now we want to go to Heroku. And I'm already logged into Heroku. And so when I go here, I'm going to um, on the main sort of personal page, this is where I keep all these things. So Desolate Savannah is the random uh, uh, name of the application. So it's set up there. We're going to go to settings. And then we're going to scroll down. And we're going to say reveal the configuration variables. And obviously, the session secret is no big deal. But we want to set this one to the way it's supposed to be. And um, you know, according to uh, connection, we're going to make it Mongo URI. And then in this value, what we're going to do is add what we have in our environmental variable. So I'm just going to copy this and throw it into our environmental variable and add it here. Cool. And so now that we have our Mongo URI saved as an environmental variable in Heroku, and we've pushed our code for connecting to the database to our production server, we should be able to just come over here and grab this URL. It's the same as uh, right here, 74228, and um, we can just take this over to our uh, free code camp and put it in here and hope that this worked out. Database connection should be present. OK, so I took a break and just had a look at it. And I think I understand how to get these guys to pass. Um, I'm just going to close this environmental file here. Um, OK, so one thing I'm noticing here is it's saying if we get to, if we get to the root after, so what, when we initialize that application, this thing is going to run. And so if I um, console log here, um, successful connection. This means that where you've connected to the database successfully, and then down here, if I run this guy, uh, it's an unsuccessful. OK, so if I save that, and then I go nodemon. Oh, look, I've already got the server running over here. And so at, yeah, I saved it. And because we use nodemon, it ran right away. And so we see we have a successful connection. Um, so. Uh, yeah, if I save this, you see that it, we start up the application before we even do anything. Okay, so this successful connection was from when I was testing it earlier. Okay, so no, we are. We're getting a successful connection to the database. And so, but when we go to our local host and we have it running, we'll see that it was just hello. Now, if we have a successful connection, what happens is we'll have our successful connection and then our root is here. Um, so. OK, this is essentially a thing that I guess I've just learned is that this is a problem with the testing suite. Uh, the thing that I think fix it is it is, is to comment out the lower uh, root URL. So now if we refresh, um, we have a su successful connection. And we only, we only do it once we're connected to the database. So before then, we're not rendering it out. And so my guess is that this, um, commenting this out, is what causes it to work. So if I go git add, git commit, and we want to say remove duplicate, well, I guess comment out duplicate um, index route and controller. And then we go git push Heroku. 
And so now I'm just going to speed this up. Okay, so the deployment is pushed out. So now if we refresh our production app, we should see here connected to database. So that tells me that we're connected to our database. So now if we run this guy, um, cool. Now we're connected to the database. Now it says deserialization should now be correctly uh, using DB and done, null, null, should be called with doc. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to get rid of this comment because we don't need it. Um, and then I'm going to come over here. And then so what they're saying is that deserialization should be called with doc. So deserialization here, right now we're passing in null, null. What we want to do is pass in the document that we do, what we find when we have my database.find one. So here we'll just pass in doc. And so once again, we're going to go get status, get add, get commit. And we're going to say um, remove commented at index route. And we're also going to pass doc into deserializer. Now we're going to say git push Heroku. And I'll speed this up. OK, cool. Now that our um, code has been pushed to our production, uh, we can come back over here. We already have our URL in there, and we can say I've completed the challenge. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, that was a little bit of a tricky one, but um, it's a good one. This is uh, we're actually setting up some very useful things. You know, if you want to build web applications where people uh, need to log in in order to use your services, uh, this is what you, the kind of thing that you have to go through. And these libraries actually make it easier. Try if doing it by yourself would just be exponentially more challenging than this. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.